Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about experience. So let's get into it. So the question in question is, Frederick, why is it damn near impossible to get a software engineering job if you don't have experience? Well, because you don't have experience and you don't know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're just going to cause either problems or cost the company money. Is that enough of an answer for you? Why is it hard to get any job when you don't know what you're doing? So the reality is, guys, that most companies, they don't want to train you. They want somebody else to pay for your experience. Because they know that a junior software developer is usually more... Usually, if you don't have the right environment, it's usually more problems than what you get from them. They don't weigh. They don't weigh up their own value. A junior software developer, practice, unless you have a very talented one or a very simple use case, they they are practically always a hindrance. And that's why you need to to figure out a sustainable strategy for your company to make money off of that junior developer. Now, the way that you usually do that is if you already have a dynamic in the company where you want to leverage. Well a different strategy from what a lot of other companies are doing. So the normal strategy that just does not favor hiring junior experiences is that you have experienced programmers who are either working in fairly isolated like you, as with a, outside of a team, like they're basically working on each in, uh, individual product, or maybe they are pairing on something, but most of the time they're working by themselves. Or maybe you are in a, in a uh, environment where you have a few mid-level developers or a few developers who are working together but you're not really in a position where you have any type of mentorship or anything like that well then hiring a junior is just a waste the cuz you're you're not going to get anything for it you're ju you're going to pay this person for basically go putting them through training and then the demotivating part of about that is that they can leave whatever whenever they like for all you know, they might just be using your company to uh, to get a foot in the door, and they're going to fuck off once they have another job lined up. And then you've paid for their experience both through salary and through legacy code, because they're going to produce shitty legacy code without any supervision, without a senior developer who is taking time. And then, of course, you as a software uh, company owner, you're going to go, well, if I'm going to allocate a senior developer, isn't that going to take away capacity from that developer? Well, yes, it is. So it's going to cost you even more in terms of productivity because that senior is now training this person. So this is the negative part. These are all the sorts of prejudices and, um, well, it's not just prejudices because there is some truth to all of this. This is what the IT companies are thinking about. This, uh, this is what they're feeling. They're not hiring you because they cannot make money from you immediately or in a very short amount of time. And they that's not, if, if you just look at, look at it from that very simple-minded perspective, there's no benefit. Why would I hire you? Now, the companies who are willing to hire junior developers are usually the companies where they have an environment where they feel as if, well, we actually have a fairly collaborative, collaborative environment and we can actually allocate some type of guidance or in like the really horrible ones, they have some type of isolated thing. They, that's the really dangerous ones where they know that oh, okay we have kind of these low stake ass projects that don't really matter to us or these things that are I mean it has to get the job has to be done but it's not like we are putting our future the future of our company on these projects and then they get an intern or they get a junior developer and they put them on this thing because they know that well as long as they can sort of churn out code they're gonna be able to do it and sure, that is technically true, and sure, you are getting some sort of experience, but I can promise you that's going to be extremely stressful for you unless you are supernaturally gifted, which is usually not the case. Uh, and it's, it's going to suck, and you're practically not going to get any help, you're not going to get any resources allocated to you, which is a sucky, sucky situation. The, but as I was saying, the, other, like the, the ones that do it right, they are the sort of companies who have already decided that we're going to invest in having a diversity of people because there is actually a lot of benefits to having junior experiences 
if you have the right dynamic in place. You, it's usually down to if you understand that. If you already have, say, a few senior coworkers and so forth, you know that you, and ideally they should be open to this thing as well, you know that you're going to be able to train junior experiences. You're going to be able to uh, to secure the quality of the output of these people. And that is very useful because it doesn't actually take all that long to get a junior developer up to a decent capacity so where they can produce something. Because the thing about that is that if a senior developer is doing something, ideally what you want to optimize for is that they are putting their time and effort on tasks that are high stakes. It's not just about the speed, because that's really like if you take a senior developer and you put them on doing things that a junior can do, sure, they might be able to produce it faster, but at the same time, you're wasting this person's capacity and talent on things that can be done by a lesser experience when you could have them doing things that are high stakes or like really, really important stuff that needs to get right. You really don't want to reverse those. That's the thing that everybody's afraid of, that if you put in a ju if you take in a junior and you just start giving them work, they're going to fuck everything up, and they will if you don't know what you're doing. If you can't coach a junior developer or you don't know how to handle a junior developer, then they will fuck things up. I promise you that they will. It's just, I think, very wrong to have this idea that this can't happen with a more experienced person. Even if you have a junior, if you have a developer who even has, I mean, one, two, three, whatever years, they can still do this. You want to see how someone fuck up your product really, really quickly? Then get someone who's at like two years and has a lot of ideas on how to make everything better all the time. I like to call them philosophers. You think that just by looking at the experience, you, you're getting someone who is good because they have a good outlook. Trust me when I say this. Even the more experienced developers, and in some case, cases, the, even the senior ones, can fuck your code base up. So this idea that people have that the only person who is a risk to your company is the inexperienced person is absolute bullshit. It comes down to a much more complicated thing than that. You need the right people and I, with different levels of experience because if you have the right people you can make everything work. Everything is going to be perfect. If you have the wrong people, even if they're really experienced, the whole thing is going to come apart anyway. So what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why it's so hard to get a software engineering job without experience is because nobody wants to pay you to train and then far so that you can fuck off and get a better job somewhere else. That's usually why. And honestly, it's not really so weird that that is how the, the way people think because most companies are not optimizing for trying to have this inclusive environment where they can leverage all of these different people in the right way. Usually they are very business minded about the whole thing. It's input output. That's what they're looking for, cost benefit. And the easiest way to measure that is, oh, UK, you have this amount of people and they produce in that amount of time. Therefore, this is the value. And if you have a jun junior experience, they're practically not going to produce any money for you in the beginning. The only time they're going to be valuable to you is if you can put them on something something like really, really shitty where you don't really, it's a low stakes project because then the cost benefit is on paper in your favor. However, the problem with that mindset is that even a senior developer can cost you a lot of money if you have them on the wrong stuff. And a junior developer can become very valuable really, really quickly because as long as you have a company structure where they get the right mentoring and they get to work on things that are within their understanding, they can actually, or they, they will actually save you money. That's something that you don't account for. If you have an entire software team of just senior developers, also that you will actually lose money the right way of doing this is usually that you have a mix of experience levels just as long as you have someone who can take the helm and make sure that the output is of good quality. Have a great day.